Welcome to the Purely Podcast. I'm your host, Alicia Pope, health coach, wellness expert. You can consider me your online bestie too. Imagine we're having a green juice together or a glass of wine for that matter. I believe in wellness that empowers you and lifts you up. On this podcast, you can expect a 360 degree view of wellness. But remember, there's no perfect when it comes to our health. It's whatever works for us. With that, let's dive in. Enjoy. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Purely Podcast. I'm really, really excited about this episode. I'm bringing back my friend, Marjan, who has been on the podcast before. I've linked her episode in the show notes, her first episode. So I would suggest starting there because we talk a lot about her story, her background, and also blood sugar balance. In that episode, we cover holistic nutrition and debunking myths around it, how cells in our body function and how to fuel them, blood sugar, like I mentioned, symptoms to look out for if your blood sugar is out of balance, how to balance blood sugar, artificial sweeteners, added sugars, all that good stuff. And she is such a great resource when it comes to blood sugar. She's like a blood sugar queen. But then in this episode, we are really talking about feeding your feminine. So when we're talking about the feminine, we're talking about our feminine cycle as women and how we can better show up for ourselves, ditching the push through mentality. Like for example, pushing through something, if it's not serving us, if we don't have the energy levels to do so, how to really live in sync with our cycle and support our cycle through nutrition, stress management, and other things that Marjan will dive into. So this is a really, really great episode. She is is really talking about how our cycles are super unique and powerful and how to really take care of them. She also talks through a lot migraines in connection with our cycles, irregular periods, bloating all the time and low energy and how those are all signs of high stress in the body and how you can better feed your cycle to get rid of symptoms such as that and what is needed for hormonal balance and better energy. So super excited for you guys to hear this episode. You are absolutely going to love it. You're going to love Marjan. She is amazing. And before we dive in, I want to give you my health coaching tip of the day. And that is to really start to one, track your cycle. I've given you this tip before. Start to track your cycle and know where you're at in your feminine cycle, in your menstrual cycle, because it can be so helpful and validating. But my other tip to this, and I was actually just talking about it with a client today, is don't let that overpower how you are actually feeling, right? Because I think that so often, like we want to get stuck to certain um, areas of health approaches, et cetera. And I don't want you to ever ignore maybe how your body is feeling just because in a certain phase of your cycle, it says that you should have more energy, but maybe you're not as as high energy at that point of your life. Because as we talk about with Marjan, different stresses that are going on, whether it's something like an exciting stress, like planning a wedding or being pregnant or things like that, or moving, et cetera, or something that's like truly stressful. Maybe you're going through a loss or grief, or, you know, maybe, a fight with a friend, et cetera, all of those things can greatly affect our energy levels. And so I think a piece of this is also just tuning into yourself, no matter what phase of your cycle is in and, and really being able to check in with your energy levels, hunger levels, stress levels, et cetera. And that is the most important thing. And I love to do that through like a journal or just taking the time to, to reflect and see like, how am I feeling today? Which we talk about that slowing down and the importance of slowing down as well. So without further ado, please help me welcome Marjan to the Purely Podcast. Hi, Marjan. I am so excited to have you back on the podcast. I actually think you're the first guest to come back twice, which I'm super excited about because you were one of like the first OGs that I really wanted to have on the show. And I'm super excited to talk to everybody and talk to you about all that's new and everything that you've been doing these days. And like we said, everybody definitely go back and listen to your first episode so they can get more of your background and all of that. But I kind of want to dive right in and just from your point of view, since the last time we chatted, 
what has been like maybe some of like the revelations, like has anything changed in terms of your approach to health and wellness, things like that? Like I would just love to get like kind of an overview and then dive deeper into everything. That is awesome that I was one of the OGs. I didn't know that because you were one of the OGs that I sought out to want to be on your podcast. So that's kind of cool that I was also one of your firsts as well. Mm -hmm. Um, As you mentioned, I'm Marjan. I'm a holistic nutritionist. And yes, please go back and listen to our first podcast episode when we were basically babies. It feels like a hundred years ago. Yeah. But... (laughs) I was vigorously nodding my head when you were saying, have things changed for you? I was like, yes. Oh my gosh. So many things have changed for me. And a big part of what has changed for me is I moved. And then as part of that move, I experienced so much stress and I'm a nutritionist. So I am like, quote unquote, an expert at taking care of my body, even through stressful times. But I think that during the last year, basically of my life, I was really, really forced to dive even deeper than I had ever done before because I was experiencing all of the symptoms that all of my clients always come to me with. And I'm, again, I'm the expert. So I'm the one that people come to me for advice on uh, dealing with migraines all the time, dealing with irregular periods or dealing with periods that sometimes come twice in the same month that has happened to me. And it's very frustrating when that happens, when the cycle is shorter and feeling bloated all the time, even if you're eating quote unquote clean, you're eating healthy food and you're still feeling bloated all the time and have all these digestive issues and low energy levels and low motivation for life. And I really started to see all of these things come up in my own life. And mind you, on the flip side of that, I was dealing with a lot of personal stress as well too. But I thought, you know what, whatever, it's just, it is what it is. It's life. I'm just going to kind of push through. And this push through mentality, I always tell my clients this, I, I needed somebody to tell me this, the push through mentality just does not work. We or yeah. we're not made to be pushing through. When our bodies are communicating something to us, it's because something's wrong. It's because there's some sort of imbalance and our bodies are actually telling us that they need something. So the more you push through, the louder it's going to get as you keep going. So that's a huge lesson that I've learned. And on the flip side of that, now a year later, I've completely changed my whole marketing and my whole approach to health and the way that I work with clients, because again, we should not be pushing through. We should be learning how to listen to our bodies, but on a deeper level. Yeah, I think that's so important because I think especially as I've been kind of like dealing, I'm thinking about this in terms of pregnancy, but I think that like you mentioned, you dealt with it in terms of like a big life change, like a move and all the stress around that. And I think that so often our brains are programmed and I think society around us is programming us to tell us, keep pushing through because we have all these voices in our head telling us like, oh, well, like you're just being lazy or like you're or just, you know, why are you pulling back in that area, et cetera. And we have all these like high expectations for ourselves. And also I think we have our normal level of output that we are used to. And when we're not able to do that so seamlessly, it's really hard for us to accept. And so I think that like you mentioning that, that like that push through mentality is not going to serve you. And so when your body's talking to you, start to listen because it will just get louder. I think that's really, really important. So I would love to kind of dive into your approach to things now. And that is the feeding your feminine. And I am obsessed with all of your new marketing. I'm obsessed with all the photos that you're sharing. I'm loving it all. So what does feeding your feminine mean? And how can we do it? So like, tell us all about this new messaging and approach, because I'm all about it. And I'm really excited for you to tell everybody about it. 
I am also very excited to share all of this. So actually what you just said really resonated with me because as you were just saying that sometimes as we go through different seasons of life and as we go through different phases, for example, pregnancy is a big season of life. And what I want people to know as they're listening to this is that a big part of what we're going to be talking about today is stress. And stress comes in many different forms, right? Like stress can be super exciting. Like in your case, um, your body is going through some stress, probably growing to humans. Um, Wedding planning, for example, is like a really big stress, but a really exciting stress or like, you know, starting a new job and kind of like getting the learning curve down, right? That's exciting, but it's also stressful. So for anyone listening to this and listening to me mention probably the word stress, a hundred times and me mentioning high cortisol levels a hundred times, it does not mean that we are trying to eliminate stress completely from our lives because that is just impossible and we're never going to be able to do that. But what we do need to realize is that our bodies are going to go through different seasons and are going to require different amounts of fuel at different seasons. Now, what I mean by feeding our feminine is that our feminine cycles, they go through ups and downs. And we were just never taught that, right? It's just this nine to five society, Monday to Friday, you are productive between the hours of nine to five. You need to be motivated. You need to have high energy. You need to, you know, do things according to that schedule. And sometimes what we forget is that our bodies, don't run on that schedule, especially as female bodies, they absolutely do not run on a nine to five schedule. And so sometimes we accidentally start adopting that nine to five mentality to our own bodies, which is creating all of these symptoms. It's creating these symptoms where our bodies are literally screaming at us, with these migraines, with these feelings of bloating all the time, feeling low energy, feeling low motivated all the time. And we just feel so stuck because we don't know why. One of the reasons why is that we're actually pushing against the grain with our own bodies, but especially in our female bodies, we are pushing against the grain with our phases with the phases of our bodies and our phases really do go through really clear ups and downs like if you just really just pay attention to one aspect of it which is energy levels if you start noticing your energy throughout your cycle if you've never done this before please start doing this ASAP yeah. it's the easiest place to start getting in touch with your cycle is through your energy levels. And you will notice that sometimes you're going to be super low energy. Sometimes you're going to probably need a lot more sleep. And that makes us feel lazy. Like you were saying, right? Sometimes we feel like, oh, why can't I keep up with society? Well, also keep in mind that we were meant to keep up with this nine to five society. But regardless, we tend to beat ourselves up over those times. But if you start actually paying attention to the phases of your cycle, you will literally notice that it goes through waves. Yes, you will feel low energy sometimes. You will require more sleep. You won't be able to work out as intensely as you may have in a previous phase. But you will also notice on the flip side of that, that some phases, you're going to be so high energy. You're going to have so much inspiration coming through. You're going to be motivated. And so that just goes to show that there are these different waves and there is literally no reason that we need to be beating ourselves up over this. We actually need to lean into these a little bit more and actually learn how to give ourselves what our bodies are asking for at each of these phases. Yeah, I think that is so, so important. And I feel like learning about my cycle for me allowed me to just really accept and like, and have validity behind how I was feeling in different phases. And I think that's really important because I think that so often we do have all of these outside noises, like never miss a Monday or something like that. When really, maybe you do need to miss the Monday and snooze your alarm and get some sleep because your body is telling you that and your energy levels are super different and low at that time. So I think that the energy level piece of things is really important. So you also 
also mentioned the nine to five and how like modern society, I think is definitely not set up for women. And I think that also women, like we're saying this push through mentality that can create so much stress and it doesn't really serve us. I think that we're constantly pushing through because we're constantly trying to live up to how society was built. And it was built around a man's cycle, really. It was built around what they need. And so are there any other ways that you think of that like modern society is approaching femininity wrong? And also like, what are some ways that like super simple tips that we can maybe approach life differently to better support our feminine? Like, you know, like you said, like not maybe sticking to a nine to five every single day, being okay with maybe your schedule looks a little bit different. Are there any other things like that that come up to you that you've made changes in your life and that you've seen have really helped your clients to really Really just help to better support our feminine. Let's take a brief break to chat about Dreamland Baby. In case you missed it, and in case you're not following me over on Instagram, Dreamland Baby has these weighted swaddles for the babies that I've been using for my twin baby girls. And the second I started using them is the second that my girls started sleeping longer stretches through the night. So they're actually my favorite product for babies. And it's something that I will be gifting to any newborn parent, any parent in general, because I just swear by them and my girls getting longer sleep equals me getting longer sleep. They're more well-rested and feeling great. I'm more well-rested and feeling great. And I just absolutely swear by them. They're so great. They started with a mom named Tara. She couldn't get her baby to sleep. She was exhausted, frustrated, searching for answers, which I've been chatting with so many other moms in my DMs that have had the same experiences. And they're asking me how I'm getting the girls to sleep longer stretches. And the answer is these weighted sleep sacks and they are award-winning doctor approved weighted swaddle. So the ones that I'm using right now actually have a swaddle inside of them so that the girls feel nice and hugged. And then they are gently weighted. They distribute the weight evenly from the baby's shoulders to their toes so that it naturally reduces stress, which allows them to relax and sleep soundly. It feels like the warmth of a parent or your hug. So I actually always kind of have the girls laying on my chest with the swaddle on after we're done feeding and then I lay them down. And when I put them down on the crib, they still have that gentle weight on top of them. So they feel really calm because when I was putting them down before they would wake up startled as soon as I put them down because they're not feeling anything on them anymore. And that makes them feel like they're getting a nice hug from me or Nick or any other one of our helpers, AKA our moms that have been helping out since the girls have been born. Absolutely couldn't recommend these enough. You guys, know sleep is so important when it comes to your health and wellness. And I'm a huge believer in the more that you take care of yourself, the better you can show up for your babies. And by giving your babies something like this, that's going to allow them to sleep is going to allow you to sleep and take care of yourself even better. And even during nap time too, the girls sleep so much better with these swaddles because they just feel so safe and secure in them. And then we're able to get a lot of things done and I'm able to take time for myself as well, which is not selfish when it comes to mom life. So best news is they are offering an exclusive discount code to all the purely podcast listeners and community. Just head to dreamlandbabyco.com. Use code purely poke to get 20% off your order and put your sleepless nights to rest. So again, that's dreamlandbabyco.com using code purely pope. All right, let's get back to the show. Yeah, definitely. And um, again, there's nothing wrong with necessarily working a nine to five job. Some people really like their nine to five jobs. And I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, not on here trying to convince anyone to live the entrepreneur life because me and you both know and that comes with a whole set of other ups and downs. But yeah. <laughs> again, when we look at this nine to five society, like you said, it really do- is not conducive to our feminine cycles and the way that it our cycles actually go. And we also tend to sometimes become a reflection of that. And one of the big ways that I find women becoming a reflection of the nine to five and doing things the exact same way every single day is by the way that we eat. And we should not be 
giving our body the exact same nutrition every single day. It is not conducive to how our systems flow. And again, this is going back to my own story. One of the biggest symptoms that really was a wake up call for me is that I've always been super headache, migraine prone since I was a kid. And I had figured it out for a long time nutritionally. I had um, introduced a lot more blood sugar balancing diet into my lifestyle, and that was really working for a long time. However, as the stress was ramping up a little bit more, I was getting these really bad migraines, not just randomly, but especially on the first day of my period. And I know so many other women struggle with this. And I know this because every time I post about it on TikTok, I swear the video ends up getting like 500,000 views because everyone's like me too. Oh my gosh, I get these migraines too. These migraines are literally a stress response from the body, telling us that it does not feel safe in the amount of nutrients that it has throughout the phases of our cycle. And then when we start to bleed on the first day of our period, it is considered a stressful event that's happening inside the body. There is a considerable amount of stress happening inside the body because literally our uterine lining is shedding and we are literally bleeding. And so when this is happening, our bodies that were already depleted because we weren't feeding ourselves properly, because we were eating in a nine to five way, are now depleted and stressed and bam, that migraine ends up coming on. So one of the things, one of the big things that I talk about in my one-on-one program, I have a mentorship program where I work with clients one-on-one. And one of the biggest parts of this is really learning how to get in touch with how much you need to eat at each phase. And guess what? Our bodies are super intelligent and they tell us how much we need to eat. This is like the coolest part about our bodies is that our cravings and our appetite will also literally change throughout the phases. So not only does our energy levels go up and down, but our bodies are telling us through our cravings, through our level of appetite, what they need. And when we ignore that with the latest trends and fasting all day and only eating one meal a day and those types of things, we are actually ignoring those cues that the body was telling you, hey, I need more nutrition. And then we ignored it, ignored it, ignored it. And then bam, we get our period. We're in super stress mode and bam, that headache comes about or a bunch of other symptoms also because it's it's the loudness, right? It's like how the body is trying to get your attention in a really loud way. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think like you mentioned, like there's just kind of like ignoring your body. And I think again, that's like kind of something from outside society and also not really being able to fully trust our bodies intuitively because there is so much noise out there and being okay with the fact that like, yes, your appetite levels are going to change. My friend was just talking about this on her stories two days ago. My friend Taryn was talking about this and she was like, today I'm super hungry. And like, she was like polling people and they're like, yeah, I always feel guilty. Like if I'm feeling more hungry one day versus the next, et cetera. And I think that's something that a lot of women deal with. So I would love for you to kind of talk about how can we feed our feminine cycle at each stage? Like, are there certain guidelines between each phases of the cycle of like foods we should be adding in or certain times where we're actually going to be hungrier? Like, what's the best way to kind of track that and start to practice that? Like, is there any tips that you could give on how to really just allow ourselves to thrive on that more stable nutrition for for our bodies so that then when we could get to our menstrual phase, we're not getting things like migraines and all these other symptoms that can definitely come up too. Yeah. I think again, the easiest phase, as your friend Taryn said, is to really start looking at the last two weeks. So the luteal phase right before your menstrual phase. The reason why I like to focus on that phase first, I actually love it when clients start working with me and I'm like, what phase of your cycle are you in? And they happen to be in that phase. And I'm like, yes, just the perfect place to start because it's the easiest place to really get in touch 
touch with your energy levels and your appetite. Your energy levels tend to be a lot lower during that time because your body is really ramping things up in terms of thickening that uterine lining, right? The uterine lining needs to get nice and thick so that either we're going to have an egg implanted and you're going to get pregnant or you are going to have a healthy menstrual phase. So that lining needs to thicken up. And so that makes sense, right? That makes sense why we would feel a lot hungrier during that phase because the body is really, really ramping things up and getting that lining nice and thick. And so the easiest place I would start if you were new to this whole concept is really start looking at those two weeks before your period. So get yourself a um, an app that tracks your period or just look on the calendar and look at that two weeks before your period and really start getting in touch with your body's need for food and your hunger levels. The other thing that I think that a lot of us women of menstruating age are just doing so backwards is that we start our day with a coffee and then we don't eat anything all like until 12 or one. And we are just on the go again, we're in this nine to five society. And so we are just go, go, go. And then we wonder why we have no energy and we have like really low desire for sex and just no inspiration and no motivation. Our bodies literally require nutrition. That is literally our fuel. You wouldn't put less gasoline in your car thinking that, oh, if I restrict it, then it's going to, it's going to work better. It never works that way. And our bodies don't work that way either. So as women of menstruating age, we really do quite literally need to feed this system a lot more frequently than we do. And one of the best places to start is with a good, solid breakfast. Um, If you listen to our previous podcast episode, I am a big believer in blood sugar balance to support the rest of our hormonal balance. And so you want to get yourself a good blood sugar balanced breakfast with proteins and healthy fats like avocados or nuts and seeds and some sort of like slow breakdown carbohydrate, like a good toast or something. And so you want to start actually feeding your system just like as if you were a car. I don't want to compare our bodies to a machine, (laughs) but regardless, I think the concept still applies because again, you wouldn't put less gasoline in the car thinking that magically it was going to be like healthier and our bodies are the same way I think so often we're like oh it's healthier to eat less food not necessarily not depending on where you're at with your hunger levels and where you're at with your energy levels so those are my two tips number one start paying attention to that specific phase because it's the easiest phase to really get in touch with your hunger cues because your hunger cues will be ramping up And always, always start with a good solid breakfast in the morning and just see how the rest of the day goes. See how your hunger cues go the rest of the day and start really actually paying attention to that. Yeah, those are good tips. And I actually, I love the car analogy because I, I've i used the car analogy too in terms of gas. And I'm like, when when people are dealing with, you know, food freedom or intuitive eating or healing their relationship with food, because I always say like, you know, it's not like we say like our car needs to earn its, its gasoline, right? Like it's like, no, it actually just like it needs it to operate and, and it doesn't need to do anything to earn it. Literally. We wouldn't ever think of it in that way, you know? So I think that sometimes the analogies can be so helpful. So I like that one too, of like, you know, you need it to operate. You need the fuel. You wouldn't ever think that like less gas is going to be more beneficial for your food or for your, for your car. So why would we think that way with our bodies too, as, as women? And I think that so often we are kind of told that, that less is better. And I think that really just thinking about how can you feed yourself and nourish yourself so that you can operate in the most optimal way is really, really important. So 
What are some of the signs that maybe somebody can tell if we're out of sync with our feminine cycle? You mentioned the migraine piece of things, which I think is a huge sign if like if you're getting migraines during your menstrual cycle, your period. Are there any other signs that like maybe, you know, of stress too? We kind of talked about that of things that are coming up that people could be aware of if they are having some of these symptoms that it's like, okay, yeah, maybe this approach to things can be helpful for them. Yeah, it really, once again, it comes back to stress. I'm surprised that we've gone this long and I haven't said the word stress or the words high cortisol. <laughs> it's become like a running joke with my friends. They're like, if you mention high cortisol levels <laughs> one more time. But <laughs> the reason why I mentioned <laughs> the reason why I mentioned stress and high cortisol levels, again, it comes back to feeding our feminine. Because when Again, I'm not talking about just the stresses that we deal with day to day in our lives or like relationship stress or work related deadlines, that type of stress. Those are all also stresses that are being piled on top of this other internal stress. And the internal stress is the fact that we as women are not taught to go in line with our systems. And so the stress that comes about from us eating out of sync with our cycles is what's actually creating these symptoms that I'm going to talk about in a second, which are literally the symptoms that were coming up for me. Miss Holistic Nutritionist, Miss I'm here to help you and guide you in your healing journey. I was also experiencing these symptoms myself because I just wasn't paying attention from that perspective. And so some of the symptoms that might be coming up for you, like I mentioned, is migraines with your period. And that seems to be such a common one. Again, I see it on TikTok all the time these days. And I think I actually started the trend. I'm going to say that I started the trend. I don't know if I did or not, but Migraines with your period. I'm there with you. Is I, I agree. I agree. I think you started it. <laughs> I started it. Thanks. <laughs> um, and that's a really big stress response in the body. Another big one is digestive issues. And one of the reasons why we experience digestive issues when we're stressed is because the body literally does, again, our bodies are so intelligent, right? Literally shuts down our digestive response because it's dealing with a perceived attack. So I always say to clients, if you could imagine a bear was attacking you, your body does not need digestion in that moment. It needs to either fight this bear, run from this bear. I guess those are the two options. Those are your two options to deal with this bear, right? The body does not need to be digesting your food. And so oftentimes when we are in that stress response, we are dealing with bloating, a lot of bloating, regardless of what we eat. We could eat junk food and we feel bloated and we feel, and we eat healthy food and we feel bloated, right? And I was definitely going through that myself and I was super confused. And so digestive issues, acid reflux and bloating and constipation, those types of things. Um, anxiety, just kind of feeling this general sense of anxiety. Again, this comes from the fact that we are constantly being forced to push against the grain with our own bodies. And so part of the anxiety could be that and just low energy, low motivation, low desire for sex is a big one as well, too, or not just having any sex drive or any desire to have sex. And those are all important as well, too, because that should be something that comes up naturally in our bodies from time to time. Maybe not every single day, but it should be something that comes around in waves. And when those things aren't happening, it's an indication that the body is in so much fight or flight mode. Fight or flight, again, referring to this bear that's attacking us. The body kind of tends to take on any type of stress as a bear attacking us. That's why it's called the fight or flight response. So if we are constantly in this fight or flight response, then certain functions are getting shut down and things aren't being absorbed properly. Our hormonal balance is off. Our cortisol levels are high. For any of my friends out there listening to this episode who are uh, keeping track of me saying the words <laughs> high cortisol, when our cortisol levels are high, and then these symptoms are coming up. Again, I want to note that just because you are in a stressful phase of life right now, I don't want you to stop listening to this episode and think like, 
well, duh, I'm really stressed. I'm stressed at work or like I'm going through a breakup right now. I'm, I'm, I'm really stressed. Yes, that is all completely valid because we all go through different seasons of stress in our life. However, we do need to learn how to feed ourselves at these different seasons. I'll use the car analogy again, actually, because I just thought of this recently, is that when you're like driving on the highway, you tend to use less gas. I think that's how it works. Whereas when you are stopping and starting constantly and constantly braking, your car is actually using up a lot more gas. And so the same thing is happening inside of our bodies when we are going through a season of stress. So if something in particular is happening for you right now where you are in a state of stress and you know that you're in the state of fight or flight, there is still ways that you can learn how to maneuver that and how to feed your body at a different level, at a different pace to be able to handle that stress. And so again, it comes back to that car analogy, right? Like, yes, the car is always going to be using up gasoline, but it actually uses up more gasoline when we're like constantly braking. And it's the same thing with our bodies. It needs more fuel at different times. Let's take a brief break to chat about Purely You. In case you missed it, Purely You is my on-demand platform for body-loving Pilates with low yet impactful workouts, as well as motivational health coaching that you can access at any time on demand. It is a completely affordable platform and really just meant to be your online home for becoming the best, healthiest, and happiest version of yourself. I wanted to create this platform because I wanted to look at health holistically. I think that so often we just look at the mindset piece of things or so often we just look at the habit piece of things or we just might look at the movement piece of things or the nutrition piece of things. But when we start to look at everything holistically, everything starts to shift and fall into place. And also when we start to change the verbiage that we're using and change the language that we're listening to and consuming, everything starts to change and shift and fall into place. And so that's where I was really thinking and where my heart was when I was creating Purely You as a platform. It was exactly what I wanted to see in an online platform and what I wanted to listen to each day. So there are now over 75 body loving movements on there. There are over 30 health coaching modules and videos of me chatting and talking about all of my top health coaching tips and topics. There are multiple different challenges on there depending on what you are looking for. So whether it be the self-love club challenge, the fall for all challenge, the best you summer challenge, there are so many different ones to choose from that really look at not just our bodies, but also our minds and looking at health holistically and improving every single area of your life. Every single month, there's also a brand new calendar that's put out for you, which is considered to be intermediate or advanced. So you can always modify depending on where you are because nobody knows your body better than you, but there is a habit tracker with a downloadable PDF calendar as well. And every single day of the month will be chosen and programmed out for you. So that is huge as well for anybody who is busy and on the go. And there are also multiple different categories on the platform now as well. So there are prenatal movements because I've been filming throughout my pregnancy. There are mindful mat, which is really great because that's just using your own body weight. There are Elevate where we add in props and it can be a little bit more advanced. Cardio Lotties where we're looking at getting our heart rate up in a very low impact way. And then there are also quickie categories for when you are maybe on the go or just wanting something quick. So under 20 minutes as well as under 10 minutes. And then of course there's like the purely popular section where it's all of your favorite flows and there are even some meditations on there. So I highly recommend if you haven't already checked it out, head to the link below in the show notes, or you can head to purelypope.com slash purely you to claim your seven day free trial of purely you hope to see you there. 
let's get back to the show. That's another great car analogy. I love it because <laughs> that is, it's like when, especially when you're like no, stopping and going <laughs> all the time. Yeah. That's, that's a really, really good one. So I know that we, you had mentioned in terms of like kind of dealing with this stress. So one of the things is obviously fueling our body properly, feeding our feminine and really kind of like living in tune with that cycle and starting to notice the energy levels, starting to fuel our bodies properly. Is there anything else that like any other like tips or things that people should be doing to stop kind of experiencing this fight or flight to really start to bring down those cortisol levels and start to manage this stress differently? Are there any other like tips or tricks that you have that you practice that you can offer for anybody too? Yes. Number one is... Again, we need to be actually fueling this system. So we need to be starting our day with some sort of actual fuel, not just a coffee. And I am speaking to myself here as well. So if anyone out there is feeling judged, please don't because I'm actually talking to myself because this was completely my life before. I Me too. am totally the... <laughs> Are you the same way? <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I, I was like totally for, for, for like months. Yeah, for months I was always doing coffee in the morning and then like I was eating at like 11 or 12 or something like that. And I was just like before yeah. I started to, before I started to try to get pregnant, I started to really focus on like moving breakfast earlier and earlier and earlier and then not having food without coffee. And it made a huge difference. So yeah, I'm right there with you. <laughs> it really does. Yeah. What I was going to say is that I'm just like such a Pisces girl, like going with the flow. I love like a good slow morning. And so part of my problem was kind of the same thing. Like I love kind of like having just a coffee and, you know, having breakfast a little bit later, but I was really stretching it out way too long. And so this was something that was not feeding my feminine. What was happening was that my body wasn't feeling fueled enough every single morning. And then eventually it's going to catch up with you. And when that catches up with you is usually on the first day of your period, when your body is going through actual physical stress, that's when all of these symptoms become so heightened, right? And so that is one of my biggest tips is Start your day with a breakfast and on a hydrating note, something like a warm water and a little squeeze of lemon. Or if you don't have lemon, just maybe a herbal tea or maybe just water instead of this coffee and running out the doors and going to work kind of mentality. It's really not doing us any favors. It's really creating a lot of these symptoms. And I have another little analogy for you guys. On, on this whole note is that I are you it. loving these uh, analogies? <laughs> yeah, the other I'm analogy is that a feminine, our feminine energy is flowy, is sexy, is it's like water. It likes to flow. It likes to be free. I personally love to have like a four hour slow morning if I had like my ideal life. I could just like, you know, lounge around with my coffee for four hours. What happens when we do that, when we don't provide our feminine flowy energy with a little bit of structure is these symptoms tend to come up, right? And so my analogy is about water that is just kind of in a puddle versus water that is in a water slide. Water that's in a puddle is like, it's free flowing. It's doing its thing. It's not really, it's powerful, but it's not like super powerful. But you put that water inside of a tube that's a water slide, it is majorly powerful. So feminine energy is already in its natural state, already so powerful and so flowy and watery. But when we give it that little bit of structure, give it a nice blood sugar balancing breakfast and give it a nice morning routine, we are actually making it so much more powerful than it even originally is. So that's my first tip is you want to have a good, start your day with a good solid breakfast. You'll see changes just from that. Another big one is really trying to kind of solidify a morning routine that is a little bit more slow paced. 
a little bit more intentional. And I know everybody's lifestyle is different. Again, some people do actually work a nine to five schedule and there's no shame about that. And good for you. If you like it, then you like it. But starting to kind of think how you can create a little bit more slowness in your day. Feminine energy really thrives on a little bit more softness, a little bit more slowness. And so your hormones will really thank you if you can just find a little bit of time to just slow things down, even if it is making your coffee a little bit slower and just being a little bit more intentional about it. That's a good one as well, too. I love that because I think that so often we're just like kind of trying to run through the motions and we're go, 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 which again, just creates more stress on the body and just not even like fully paying attention and being intuitive with like, what's actually going to serve me in this moment, you know, with each different, each different like piece of our day, whether it's eating or whether it's, you know, responding to an email or things like that, like reading, et cetera. So I think that like those little things of how we approach those, those moments in our day are huge. So that's a really, really good tip about slowing down. And I think so, too, another big one is that I always hear people say, well, I'm not hungry in the mornings because mm-hmm. I'm just, I don't eat breakfast because I'm not hungry. That is also a stress response. So when we really start to kind of find intentional ways to slow down in our life and to start paying attention to where this feminine cycle needs a little bit more support, needs a little bit more nutrition. When we really start paying attention to that, we will notice that those hunger cues will start to come back. We don't have a hunger cue in the mornings, likely because we are living in this state of low level stress all the time. And again, when we are stressed, when we are being attacked by this perceived bear, the body literally shuts down your digestive function. Why would you need to eat? when you're being attacked by a bear, right? And so if you're one of those people, which again, I was definitely one of those people, you are waking up and you're like, I actually literally don't feel like having breakfast for the first four hours of my day. That's an opportunity for you to start looking at ways to kind of slow things down intentionally, start managing stress in a way that works for you. And again, start looking at your cycle and where you're at at each phase. And also too, I think that so often if we're not used to eating in the morning or something like that, because I used to be that way too. I'm like, well, I don't get hungry until like 11 and I want to listen to my body, et cetera. When I started to just slowly intentionally like move that eating time up and even just make it something small, whether it's like, you know, something like a piece of toast with like an egg or something like that, you know, something very small or like yogurt with a little bit of fruit and and nut butter, et cetera. And, and just start to slowly, slowly, slowly train your system by like moving it back a little or just starting off small, then your body starts to crave it. And you'll start to want that like bigger fill, filling breakfast too. It doesn't have to be like, okay, well, tomorrow I'm going to eat, a, I'm going to wake up and like eat at 8am or whatever, if you're not used to it too. I think those like small gradual changes can be really helpful. Yeah, definitely. And a little bit of warm water and lemon juice goes a long way as well, too, to kind of just kickstart our digestion in a natural, normal kind of way. And yeah, like you said, it doesn't have to go from zero to 60. If you're not the type of person that eats breakfast normally, then definitely don't force it. I always get this comment from people on Instagram and on TikTok saying, well, I don't eat breakfast. Um, I don't feel hungry in the morning. And you definitely do want to listen to that, but you also do want to kind of intentionally start paying attention to that hunger cue. Because I think, again, one of the big problems is that we are just not used to paying attention to these hunger cues. We're not used to trusting that our bodies know what's best. And so our bodies don't feel safe. Our nervous systems don't feel safe to even give us that cue because who's listening to the cue anyways, right? And so what happens is that the body gives us even louder cues like these really frustrating migraines with our periods because we were never listening to those smaller whispers, right? And so again, if you're the type of person that is not having breakfast, then just starting really small and just getting in the habit of paying attention to when you're hungry is going to start to ramp that up a little bit for you. 
Yeah. Well, and also something that I tell my clients as well, like when we start to even add in more food, right. And start to like actually have a well-balanced plate, like adding in more protein, more fat, more carbohydrates, et cetera. I, I ask them to start noticing, like start to reflect on your energy levels throughout the day, see how they change. And then also like, see, like, are you having as many cravings? Are you having as many like binge things that are going on throughout the day, especially later on in the day? Cause I think that can help too, to just kind of keep showing up to make this small change when you notice it. Cause I think so often it's like, we don't, we don't necessarily notice all of those differences unless we're kind of trying to be consciously aware of it. But I think then when you notice notice that when you're like, Oh, I actually, I feel more satisfied. I feel much more energetic. I'm not having as many cravings later in the day. Then that can kind of fuel you to continue to show up in this like new different way too, which I think is like helpful too, which I'm sure that you've seen. And like you see with your clients all the time as well. A hundred percent. And it really does kind of decrease the I don't want to say like decrease snacking because there's nothing wrong with snacking if you're actually hungry, but it does kind of decrease that mindless, like all constantly needing to grab something, especially at nighttime. I know for a lot of us women, especially we feel those hunger cues come on really strong at night. And I think part of the reason again is because our bodies probably feel safe during that time. We're much more relaxed we're not at work, we're not at our nine to five. And we probably have a glass of wine in our hands. And we're just kind of like chilling, watching Netflix. And we feel really snacky. I feel like I am a bottomless pit. I need to eat everything around. But I was quote unquote, so good with my diet throughout the day. Again, like you were saying, if we actually learn how to fuel ourselves properly, and actually pay attention to when those hunger cues are coming up throughout the day and making our bodies feel really safe and our nervous systems feel safe, we're going to see less and less of that mindless like, oh, I feel like I need something. I feel like I need popcorn or chips or something, right? Yeah. A hundred percent. And that's good too, to like notice that it's like, yeah, that's probably when you're feeling safe or when you're feeling calm and not as stressed too. And then you're feeling hungry. Cause I don't think I even had like really put that together with, oh yeah, well in the morning, of course you're not hungry because you're probably stressed. And that's like part of the fight or flight response. And so it's kind of like, you have to start to change your body before you necessarily maybe feel those cues, et cetera. So I think that's really important. I feel like we could chat for hours and like continue to go, go and go and go, but we are at time. So I wanted, yeah, yeah. But I wanted to ask you and see, I know I asked you on the first episode, but you know, I am a self-love junkie. I love all things self-love and I would love to know what self-love means to you today. And it'll be interesting to hear like how your answer has changed too. Yeah. I wonder what my answer was before. I don't remember. (laughs) I feel like my answer was something similar, which is we really just do need to trust our bodies and be in tune with what our bodies need. And our bodies are literally always telling us what they need. And so it goes back to this whole like Pisces nature that I have of like, oh, I just want to like listen to my body and lounge around all morning and just drink a coffee. That's called listening to your body as well too, right? But what is even deeper than that is these symptoms that come up that my body is telling me these, this isn't making me feel good. These migraines with my period, they, they don't feel good and feeling bloated all the time. That doesn't feel good. So yeah, there's this like, I want to listen to my body, but I also really intentionally want to listen to my body and feed it with the right things, the right type of fuel that is going to give me the right type of energy that I want for the lifestyle that I want. So I don't know if that really answers your question, but listening to my body, I guess. I love it so much. Well, Marjan, this has been absolutely amazing. So can you tell everybody where they can find you, where they can follow you? And also, I know you have your migraine guide as well. So for anybody that is getting migraines around their period, tell them where they can get that, all the good things. 
Yeah. So I'm a holistic nutritionist and I have a one-on-one mentorship program and you can find that on healthybymarjan.com. And I also have a little shop on my website where I sell self-paced protocols in ebook format. So PDF format. And one of them is like you said, my migraine guide. And that is really a way for you to get in touch with these migraines while also getting in touch with your feminine cycle and really learning how to not only pay attention to these migraines coming on more frequently in your life, but also learning how to prevent them. So one of the big things for me was that I was always down and out for like 48 hours when I had these migraines. And not a lot helps during that moment, but my ebook and my protocol really does help you to learn how to pay attention before the migraine comes on. So you're really learning how to prevent them from coming on so frequently. And I would love to give you guys a little discount code for that. Should I say it here? Yeah. 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 So it is feed your cycle 23 and that is giving you $23 off of the migraine guide in my shop and that is healthybymarjan.com and you can follow me on all my social media as well too at healthybymarjan on TikTok and on Instagram Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Marjan. And I feel like that ebook is like such a good place to start for everybody that is wanting to dive even deeper into everything that we discussed today. And if any of those things are resonating with you, then definitely go get that because I feel like it will just be amazing for anybody that needs help in that area. Thank you so, so much for being here. This was so much fun. All right, love. I hope that you enjoyed that episode. And if you are new here and find yourself wanting more, you can find me on all social platforms at Purely Pope and the Purely Podcast on Instagram specifically. And you can claim your seven day free trial of Purely You, your home for becoming the best version of you with access to monthly health coaching and body loving Pilates flows in three different categories, Elevate, Cardiolatis, and Mindful Mat with new flows and movements added weekly, as well as monthly challenges at purelypope.com. Thank you for being here. And I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.